Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. I love your piece. Keep going, Republicans. You're doing great. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> you're enjoying that. You said, Jim, and this is, by the way, like 11 billion speaker nominees ago, but you said Jim Jordan is a vile, unpatriotic, anti-democratic, subterranean troll, but his run for House Speaker is so immensely entertaining in a politically awkward kind of way, I can't help but feel a sense of joy and gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> and you just said, not only is this process illustrating Republicans in thermonuclear disarray, but it's just as embarrassing for Jordan as it was for Kevin McCarthy the last time they tried. It gets, you think it cannot get more embarrassing by the day. And oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Right? And, and it does. It, it seems like I wrote that 12 weeks ago. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it two seems, days ago. It was just like, what, five days ago that I wrote that. I'm like, wow, those were the days. You know, I feel like this, like the Wayback Machine is now being in, yeah. engaged. But now, you know, they've nominated this guy who looks like Tim Kazarinsky from the Police Academy <laughs> uh-huh. movies. You're right. Yes. yes. <laughs> I hope that guy Except that makes the a- funny noises with his mouth is in this sequel. Um- yes, that too. But I mean, it's like he's the nerdy guy from from Police Academy. And yeah. he was also on Saturday Night Live for a while. And the <laughs> yes. crazy thing is, it, it actually betrays who he really is because who he really is is a horrible, horrible demon of a man yeah who is yeah. Uh, labeled by the new york times as being the most important architect of the challenges to the thank 2020 you. election thank you vile uh, anti-choice no homophobic just lunatic and and we were saying like so trump shivs emmer after he had let, we were saying i think it's a 100th of a scaramucci it was only yeah. two hours that tom emmer was the guy um it's allison, a micro scaramucci <laughs> yeah, it's a micro mooch um yeah yeah uh, allison gill said why did uh, donald act friendly to emmer and then throw him under the bus because trump's a fascist and he doesn't want a speaker he wants the house to be in chaos so he alone can fix this the chaos is a feature not a bug he's still trying to dismantle dis- democracy I mean, you know, I was thinking this yesterday, Bob, it really, even for those of us that you and I say marinate in this, it is extraordinary every day to wake up and get your head around the amount of criminality just that we know Donald Trump is engaged in and the news stories that come out every single day, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, 91 counts doesn't even really begin to summarize the amount of crimes he's guilty of that, uh, quite honestly, he's never going to get uh, uh, penalized for. He's never going to be indicted for. And, uh, you know, they're everything. In fact, I was having a, a conversation with, uh, uh, get, get your dinger ready. I was having a conversation with uh, listener Tim Russ from Star Trek yes. Voyager and Star Trek Picard. Love him. And we were talking, yeah, we were having a little text chat about this. And he was bringing up all new crimes that <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Trump has I mean- committed. I'm like... Oh my God, that actually is a crime. What? That, that's insane. You, I never even thought of that. Right, yeah, you talk about like Mark Meadows. They were saying they're all grifters. They all are trying to make money. This book he knew was full of lies. But mm-hmm. but they were saying that's the other crime that obviously Jack Smith is investigating is the grifting all of all, all this, the big lie. And how many yeah. suckers, I mean, you said, I hope he keeps telling his suckers not to vote. I mean, <laughs> just keep sending money. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, you know, with the House race, I think on some level, Donald Trump believes that uh, Republicans in disarray in the House of Representatives, yada, 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 Trump gets out of legal jeopardy somehow. Yeah. Like somehow this is going to lead to a defunding of the Department of Justice and and Jack Smith's office, and that he's going to wiggle out of all of this as a consequence. The other side of it is, of course, that Donald Trump just loves chaos. He just loves to... Yeah, I mean, I always compare it to the, you know, the metaphor of shaking up the ant farm and seeing what yeah. happens. Donald Trump loves to do that. This, the what does this button do philosophy yeah. of this is, being yes, a uh, public yes. figure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's the nuclear one. The, it, this is just the morning stack. Trump attacks Mark Meadows and Jack Smith following bombshell report undermining stolen election clean, claims. Trump backs insurrectionist Mike Johnson in speaker bid uh, with an eye on 24 election. And Trump threatens political foes that retribution is coming when we assume office in stunning new social social media post i mean yeah. he if you thought like he's been losing his as you say spadoinko up until now oh my god i mean what do you yeah. make of this mark meadows bombshell because we just don't know all the contours yet like what's happening in georgia with this what's happening with with you know uh, uh obviously from trump attacking him it appears to me that he has indeed flipped and uh, you know yeah, this report yeah. is correct but what do you think yeah. bob 
Well, people much smarter than me have been saying that he flipped. And right. Uh, right. my initial read of the ABC News report was exactly what you're talking about. I, I don't quite understand where this lands in the continuity of, say, you know, for example, what we saw with Jenna Ellis or with Ken Cheesebro or any of these others who have like really gone out and, and yeah. gone the full you know, flip. They're, they're just all the way there. And with Mark Meadows, it seems a little bit more murky. But, um, you know, like Bradley Moss yesterday, his first reaction was, okay, Meadows has flipped. Yeah. So I'm going to go with that explanation yeah. because, because it makes because us happy. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an attorney. I don't know exactly <laughs> what this means, but it seems like smart people are saying, isn't that a fallacy? Like, I'm just like, okay, yeah, yeah whatever the smart people are saying, I'm going to go with right. that. Well, yeah, I, I mean, no Kyle Griffin <laughs> was the first one I read yesterday. He said Meadows informed Smith's team he repeatedly told Trump in the weeks after the election the allegations of voter fraud were baseless. That is the definition of throwing someone under the bus because he participated in this just as fully as Trump did. But this is clearly yeah. him, right? Meadows also told federal investigators Trump was being dishonest with the public when he first claimed to have won the election. Well, again, he was his wingman the entire you know, we can go through all the details of why, but yeah, man, yeah. he better have given up everything for him to get immunity, right? Right, sure. And the thing with Mark Meadows, too, is he's going to go a long way to establishing what is known as mens rea, which is, you know, the legal term, Latin for uh, knowledge of your crime. It, 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 Trump has to understand that what he was doing was wrong on some level, that he knew that he lost that election. And of course, Mark Meadows has apparently told Jack Smith that he told Donald Trump that the election was not stolen and he lost the election. Yeah. So whether that penetrates that toxic positivity of Donald Trump's worm infested brain, that's a whole other story. I mean, it's uh, it, it's going to be a matter of a bunch of little things like that, like Mark Meadows saying, oh, yeah, he knew I told him. And then a bunch of other people saying the same thing and some sort of reaction from Donald Trump in that testimony that indicates he understood that he lost, yeah. but he can't because of this power of positive thinking, whatever is driving him this yeah. madness of his. Oh, I just um, had a horrible light bulb go on when you said that. I just was thinking because it seems like, you know, from this reporting, Meadows is now telling the truth and it's all aligning with Cassidy Hutchinson said, with one exception, Bob, and that's him yeah. saying, oh, no, tr I never heard Trump say, I knew I lost, which is what Cassidy Hutchinson <laughs> said. Mark Meadows told her, the president said. But I'm like, yeah. you're right. Is that the like wormhole he's going to let Trump wiggle out of? Going, oh, right, right. yeah. I, well, I, ultimately, these are cowardly, cowardly people. Yeah. And it's taking a whole lot to get Mark Meadows to do the right thing because he's terrified. Yeah. I think one of the reasons why Jenna Ellis was sobbing in court, yes, or at least pretending to sob, yeah. is be, not just be, not because she had to finally tell the truth that the the big lie was exactly what we've all been saying it was, yeah. a big lie, yeah. but also because she's terrified of Donald Trump and his supporters. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine sticking your face into that wasp's nest uh, d deliberately? And the kind of retribution she may receive as a consequence of that. The same with Mark Meadows. Already Donald Trump is basically, in a, in a tacit way, calling yeah. out his flying monkeys to harass Mark Meadows. That's what, yeah. that's what Donald Trump was basically doing on Troth Central uh, with his uh, screech screechy screed about mark meadows yeah. so yeah that's was that the only one that expected prospect. while jenna was blubbering to have uh, marjorie taylor green come like kneecap her like nancy kerrigan just you know so she could actually <laughs> why right. me why i <laughs> yeah i'm sorry so sad <laughs> so sad <laughs> Yeah, we By almost way, bought it, Jenna. <laughs> can I tell you two tweets that sum up how awful the Republican Party is? Marjorie Taylor Greene, I voted against Tom Emmer because he voted to certify the 2020 election and voted to codify marriage equality. <laughs> she said on record she voted against Steve Scalise because he has cancer. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. I keep saying, Bob, they're having an awful off like every day as to who can be more awful. I love this one. Yeah. Sitting members of Congress telling journalists to shut up for asking about a coup attempt against American democracy. Did you see when they announced Mike Johnson? What's her name? Virginia. That's scary. Yeah. Lady. Oh, yeah. Shut up! She's shut up! Like, shut up! <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's Sister Mary like Oliphanting. Sounded like a Billy West character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he does the Marge shot voice, yeah. that was Virginia Fox. Virginia Fox. <laughs> I hate to say it. She reminds me of... Mrs. Thornton in, high, in my Catholic high school, she had one eye that she has one eye that's doing something, you know. <laughs> one eye that's doing something. Yeah. Oh, here we have the audio. Good on. morning, class. Good class. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
That was Thank Virginia. You. Okay. She sounded like that bird yeah. noise that Chris plays occasionally. Yeah, right. Down to the screeching. She's, yeah, reporters just being rude, asking about yeah. you know your new yeah, speaker now be, being part of the or being a part of the coup. Yeah, there it is. Just There's Virginia me. Fox. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you notice in the press conference where they announced Mike Johnson as the nominee, they managed to squeeze the entire Republican caucus onto that dais for the event. <laughs> yes. To show, hey, look, we're united. See people behind us, white people, and they're angry and they're mad about things and they want to destroy democracy. See, they're all here. And Tim Kazarinsky from Police Academy is our right. nominee, by the way. <laughs> to, re- to replace little teeny tiny Patrick McHenry. He's the yes, new. Yes, that's right. The, the angriest elf teeny- in the tree. Yes. Yeah. Re- they replaced Patrick McHenry with a teeny tiny Johnson, is what they've done. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's also he's also teeny tiny. That's the least. He's about the same height as Virginia I Fox. Kinda, I just didn't. I, do they have entrance music? I was looking forward to Patrick McHenry, but short people got no reason. I just you know, or the Lollipop Clan or something. I was like, you know, at least if they could give us some entertainment mili- value. Yeah, I was thinking like one of those militant uh, Nazi marches or something like that as they as they go in. That wasn't so funny, was it? <laughs> yes, yeah, but no, uh, that's Bob, yeah, that's no. what we're talking about. We're talking about fascism with these people. Oh. <laughs>